This is HET 119, electricity 2, motor and controls. This is week 11, and we're covering air conditioning control devices. This week's assignment will support the HVC learner to understand the types of controls used for the HVC industry, discover the operation of the types of controls used to run motors, discover safety controls for compressors and motors, understand the use of thermostats, understand the use of pressure controls, understand the use of humidistats, understand the use of airflow switches, discuss the purpose of integral controls, learn the purpose of binary controls, and learn the purpose of analog controls. Controls are used in the HVC refrigeration field to operate motors and other types of control devices. Therefore, it is critical for a technician to understand how these control devices are used and its purpose. Without controls, motors and other controlled devices will run all the time and to operate these devices someone would need to turn it on and off manually. However, some control devices need to operate at different speed, volume, humidity, temperature, or pressure without an automatic control device, it will be impossible to sense the changes in these variables. In air conditioning systems, control devices are used for safety and operation. Therefore, knowing the difference between the two and why it is used as either is important. Because air conditioning systems can generate high pressures and temperatures and can become unsafe, safety limits are used to cycle off the control device. Operator controls are used to turn on and off control devices at the correct point in time. Without this automatic control device, a technician must be on hand to operate the air conditioning system at all times of the day. A HVC a refrigeration technician must have an in-depth knowledge of controls and control devices to truly understand the operation and serviceability of HVC refrigeration equipment. Some of the terms the learner need to research this week is pressure controls, liquid solenoids, time delay controls, contactor, compressor, condenser fan motor, condensing unit, and reversing valve. Operating controls are devices that control the operation of motors, pumps, fans, and other control devices. The main function is to give automatic operation of the equipment or control device like a compressor or blower motor. The air conditioning system will have many operator controls and the more efficient the equipment is the more controls the system will have to precisely control the different functions such as a air conditioning systems will have a certain amount of controls but another type of air conditioning system which is called a heat pump have many more controls because it's more efficient and have different devices such as um, reversing valves, outdoor thermostats and any other type of controls to, uh, to help it operate and the different functions. For an air conditioning system a thermostat will control the temperature in the building these controls can be either analog, which is electrical mechanical, or electronic. Electronic thermostats are becoming popular because it is more accurate and reliable than other type of controls. One of the reasons room thermostats are becoming digital because it's not sensitive to uh, levelness. The old type of thermostats that use mercury had to be perfectly level on the wall and if it wasn't it was out of calibration. 
air conditioning systems can start up under a load and if the compressor is not a capacitor start type motor it will trip off on thermal overload. Many air conditioning systems will have a solid state time delay to keep the compressor from operating for about five minutes to give the air conditioning system time to equalize the pressure to take the stress off of the compressor. The solid state time delay for this type of system will have contacts in the normally open position and will close on time increase. Low ambient fan controls are used to control the operation of the condenser fan motor when the outdoor temperature is lower than it uh, for proper operation. The fan motor can cycle on and off or vary its speed to maintain a usable head pressure. This low ambient fan control contacts will operate and or either stop or slow the condenser fan motor down when the head pressure on the high side of the refrigeration system is lower than normal. Once the head pressure has returned to a normal pressure, the fan will operate normally. Air conditioning systems need limits and safety controls for protection the main components. Since motors and compressors are expensive, safety controls will be wired in series with the load to protect it from unsafe conditions. High pressure controls are used mostly on commercial air conditioning system compared to residential systems. When the pressure on the high pressure side of the refrigeration system is higher than normal and is operating in an unsafe pressure range, the high pressure control will open up its contacts and de-energize the compressor circuit. Low pressure controls are used mostly on commercial air conditioning systems compared to residential systems again. When the pressure on the low pressure side of the refrigeration system is lower than the normal and is operating in a unsafe pressure range, the low pressure control will open up its contacts and de-energize the compressor circuit. Both the high and low pressure controls will be uh, controls will be uh, in the compressor circuit and will be wired in series to the contactor coil. Motor protection for compressors, condenser fan motors, evaporator fan motors, exhaust fans and makeup air fan motors and pumps is necessary to protect the equipment from costly repairs if the control device is not kept from operating in an unsafe condition. The compressor motor protection control can protect the motor of the compressor from overcurrent or high temperature conditions. A HVC technician should understand how air conditioning systems operate to be able to troubleshoot any problems with a, the equipment. Without a clear understanding, a technician would only be guessing at the problem and change out the wrong components. This fact is not only important for heating systems but all HVC equipment. When the thermostat closes from the room temperature increasing, the contacts are made and voltage supplied to the air conditioning unit. Most electronic room thermostats have a built-in time delay circuit to delay the operation of the air conditioning for about five minutes. After the time delay is up, the control voltage is sent to the circuit board or through the contactor of the condenser unit. Of course, this time delay is used to keep the compressor from starting up under a load. From the air conditioning circuit board, 
The control voltage will leave the circuit board and travel to the condenser unit contactor outdoors. The contactor will control the condenser fan motor and the compressor. The condenser fan motor and the compressor is wired in parallel on the contactor's output terminal, which is terminal. When the temperature in the room has reached set point, meaning that it has satisfied the thermostat by the being at the correct temperature, the thermostat contacts will break and de-energize the control circuit to the air conditioning circuit board. So troubleshooting air conditioning systems is no different than troubleshooting any HVC equipment. Therefore, troubleshooting is based on knowing how the system operates and the purpose of all the controls and components in the system. Without this knowledge, the technician will be lost and will become a parts changer. Understanding the sequence of operation of an air conditioning system is the first step of troubleshooting. Knowing how to read electrical diagrams will aid the technician to work through electrical problems. Using the uh, VOM, the voltmeter, to troubleshoot and reading a electrical diagram is a requirement for a HVC technician to become competent in his or her uh, daily job. A VOM will be used to check for voltage, open circuits, and of course short circuits. One of the most difficult things for HVC technician to learn is how to eliminate unnecessary information and concentrating of the task at hand using critical thinking skills which is thinking about thinking about problems and without having developed uh, this skill and it is a skill that it will struggle um, trying to troubleshoot systems and because there will be days when you may run into problems that you never seen before and if you haven't developed how to work through in the process of working through uh, issues like that, um, it will be a very difficult career. So replacing a defective component is the last portion of the troubleshooting process. After determining the problem, the HVAC technician uh, will need to use mechanical and craftsmanship um, skills to replace a defective component in the system. But even after that, the, actually the last thing is to test the equipment, to test to make sure the equipment is operating correctly the way it's supposed to. During preventive ins uh, maintenance inspections on air conditioning systems, the technician need to check all components and controls uh, for deterioration of the contacts or the mechanical linkages. For smaller type of controls, replacement of the complete control is preferred than repairing. However, on larger commercial type controls, servicing and replacement of components or parts of the equipment uh, is, um, is feasible. And they do sell parts for that. So to summarize this week's um, uh, PowerPoint presentation. Control devices are the part of the system to operate when, how, where, and what is to be turned on and off, and of course controlling the variable signals of controls. HVC systems need to control the temperature, pressure, flow, humidity, and level for the comfort of humans, thereby it will be necessary to know all possible sequence of operation of any type of HVC equipment, including air conditioning. Controls can be binary, on and off, analog, which is variable, or integral, which is variable and adjusting. 
controls to give the most efficient control of HVAC systems. Most control systems use low voltage operating at 24 volts, even though commercial systems can have higher voltage for control voltage. But it will still use transformers to step down the voltage. Control safety controls are used to protect the system and the occupants and the structure.